Stanley Kramer hired me, re interviewed me, rather. And uh, then I, he said, anybody talk to you about salary? I said, no, no one talked to me about salary. I don't think I had, a, I just, he said, you know, no one needs to. We'll be your, we're your agent. I said to myself, now they may be doing me in, but I don't care. I don't care. I'll be in the movie if they give me $10 a week. So <laughs> we sure enough, they hired me. And then Billy, Billy, I don't know what his title is, but he was in charge of something. Anyway, he called me up. Daddy, Isabel, we see we 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 have we found out we have more money in the till. So we are raising you. Now the money was five hundred dollars a week, which I almost jumped out of my skin. Now they're raising it a hundred. Six hundred dollars a week. I went. What, Billy, thank you so much. Oh, good. I couldn't ha hang up that phone fast enough to run in the kitchen. That's where Sanford was. Sanford, they giving me a raise. I haven't even started yet. They've given me a raise. Oh, I was in my heaven. They were powdering me outside before we they say action, you know. And I... In Hollywood, I've arrived. <laughs> I had. Catherine Hepburn was older than me, and that was supposed to be her daughter. I don't know why I had to be great. I couldn't understand that. But mine wasn't to ask the reason why. Mine was to do or get the out. I took the to, Even to work on a movie? Yes. Why? Because there were no cars. We didn't have cars. The kids, the boys didn't have cars. And you didn't and, drive. And I, of course, and I didn't drive. So what would I need with a car? I uh, was standing up on a crowded bus, you know, standing over this man. And, and he got up and offered me his seat. Well, I, I thanked him. I guess this lady with the gray hair was standing over him and he felt guilty with me standing over him like this. So uh, the next day when I got to work, I was telling Helen, I said, you know, yesterday it was this nice man offered me his seat. I said, this gray hair made him conscientious of me standing over him, keeping holding myself together to keep from falling on him. So he offered me his seat. I, so she thought it was funny, and I thought it was funny, and we laughed. So all right, in comes Catherine Hepburn. And Helen told her the story, and she was laughing about it. Catherine said, Isabel takes the bus to work. She said, yes, you see, she doesn't drive. and. But she shouldn't take a bus to work. Spencer! He comes over. What is it, Kate? She said, Isabel takes a bus to work. <laughs> well, he says, so? <laughs> she shouldn't be taking a bus to work. Do something about it, Spencer. What would you prefer that I do, Kate? Well, get someone to pay her way to work. She should be coming to work at a bus. After a while, then he comes over to me. He says, Isabel, I understand you take a bus to work. I says, yes, I do. He said, well, why don't you take a cab? Didn't want to tell the man I was too cheap. And this was the only job, the job I had making more money than I ever made in my life. I didn't expect to blow it away on a cab. 
I took so long to answer. I guess he said, well, uh, well, I'm going to talk to the, the money man. He did go speak to him. Then he came over to me and said, Isabel, I understand you take a bus to work. I said, yes, I do. He says, can't you take a cab? I said, well, a cab costs a lot of money from where I live. He said, well, look, you take the cab to and fro. Get a receipt each time and turn it in at the end of the week to me. I says, all right, thank you. Sure enough, every morning I call, in fact, I call a cab the night before to have them in my house that next morning. This was funny. I think I got this job, making all this money, and taking the cab to work. So, uh, we, uh, and when I offered, I, I gave them the, the paper, and I included the tip in it. <laughs> I mean, I didn't even take the tip out of my pocket. I included the tip on the bill. And I gave it to them, and they gave me my money, which was very nice. Your scene with Sidney Poitier, you have many scenes in the film. The one scene that comes to mind, which is very memorable to anyone who has seen that film, uh, pretty intense. Uh, oh, I, the one that I came in and laid him out, and yeah. I told him he, he finger, better do yeah. nothing. I said to my, I don't remember the words now, but you don't do nothing to that girl because I raised her up. And if you do anything to harm her, I will get next to you. And as I got to the door to get her, I said, and furthermore to that, you ain't even all that good looking. Pow, went the door. I said, that was a good. Great scene. He had me to come in and do it for him. Well, I didn't do it like that. I did it slowly. And uh, he said, no, Isabel, Stanley Kramer said, I want you to get in there. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Give it to me, fast. Give it to me, give, give it, boom. Well, that's, so we rehearsed it that way for about a half an hour or so. So that when I got outside before the cameras, I had, I had it down. How many Hi. takes, do you remember? Uh, well, I guess there were about three or four, because uh, I did it once and then he, he said, cut, for some reason. And I went into Cindy's chest like, oh, oh. He said, stop it. Stop it. They've got plenty of film. So you just do it again. Just do it again. Because, I, you know, I hate to make mistakes, you know. And, I, and at the end, at the, another, then we did it again. And I said, I remember he told me to stop it. Don't do, you know, just to go on. I, I bit my tongue, and then I did it again. Now, after I got it all done, then I got a, they applauded, they applauded me. I was very happy about that. And I was asking the sound man, I said, did, did you hit me? The sound man was like three stages down there. I says. Could you hear me? He said, could I hear you? <laughs> they heard you, <laughs> he said, on Park La Brea. <laughs> I said, oh, well, I just wanted to make sure. 